on different side, both sides of the fold. On the flanks of the dam and up here on the top is where they take their elevation measurements to monitor the fold. Are there brass pins right or something? Here? Oh, is that these, one there? These okay. pins, I don't know about being brass. I guess that's brass. I guess it could be brass. It, it looks, looks like, like iron is rusty. You, know? so, yeah, you, rust. you, got some, you got several of these on both sides mm -hmm. and on the flanks. I think he said, what did he say? They had eight? I think he said eight, yeah. All right, now, those are intrepid and don't mind waiting in the grass. Just watch your step before you put your step on. We'll go down here and we'll look at a national scar. Oh. <laughs> so you guys can scare up the snakes. Watch your step now. <laughs> But Goose Creek, didn't they originally attribute some of the activation of the faulting there because of production? Yes, but the fault. Uh, so you have to sort of keep this picture in mind about uh, how close you can build to, to the fault. And I would say on this side, we, we can tell you the fault is running in a straight line. This zone tends to be about as little as 10 feet wide and like more like where I'm standing, it's, it's more like 20, 20, 25 feet wide. That's, uh, that's pretty much takes care of it. Beyond one of the most frequently asked questions of, of uh, those of us that work for people that are planning to build where there are faults is how close to the fault can you build? Well, the answer has to be if you build on the high side, you can build right up to this thing. You'll notice that little block, blue block there that's even cantilevered over the fault a little bit. And you can cantilever a home foundation like that over the fault, but only for a few feet. Depends on the strength of the foundation. Uh, but anyway, very close. On the low side, that's the big problem. Because this is not one fracture going down into the ground. There's a whole series of them that we're standing on here. We're all standing in this fault zone. And if we made this diagram a little more realistic, we would have put a whole bunch of lines going down here showing uh, 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 slip surfaces. It's kind of like a deck of cards standing on edge, you know, and, and it, uh, each one slips relative to the other. But the rates of, of, of slip are dying to zero here, uh, just very gradually. So uh, we, we can't make a map that shows where the end of this fault is. Where does it end on this side? I don't know. We, we can never detect it because it just fades out slowly. Uh, if it moves uh, one twentieth of an inch every 40 years or something, is that still of concern to you, you know? So it's up, it's up to the person who's going to do the constructing uh, and also the size of the structure, uh, how far you should stay away from the, this first break in the vault up, uh, at the edge of the up throw lock. Uh, now, when we do, we're doing these elevation measurements on the top to try to get some idea of what this the geometry of that surface surface is. But ne this needs to be done for every fault, and I suppose every hundred feet along every fault. So you know, it's it's not a task that's been completed. You can't give an answer. It's not there. Where we put benchmarks across is we see these structure can get rates of movement complex. decreasing as you mm -hmm. go along to the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, So this just has to do with distribution of stress of depth. It's not simple. Probably the strength of spillover. Is that the thing that you were saying that they paid? Or no? Is that the thing that you were saying that they paid? Right. This is coal rolled concrete.